Act Two of Cyrano the Bergerac. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Cyrano the Bergerac, a play in five acts by Edmond Rostand, translated by Gladys Thomas and Mary F. Gilmer. Act Two: The Poet's Eating House, Raganus Cook and Pastry Shop, a large kitchen at the corner of the Rue Saint Honor and the Rue de la Arbre Sec, which are seen in the background through the glass door in the grey dawn on the left in the foreground a counter surmounted by a stand in forged iron on which are hung geese ducks and water peacocks in great china vases are tall bouquets of simple flowers principally yellow sunflowers on the same side further back an immense open fireplace in front of which between monster fire dogs on each of which hangs a little saucepan the roasts are dripping into the pans on the right foreground with door further back staircase leading to a little room under the roof the entrance of which is visible through the open shutter in this room a table is laid a small flemish lustre is alight it is a place for eating and drinking a wooden gallery continuing the staircase apparently leads to other similar little rooms in the middle of the shop an iron hoop is suspended from the ceiling by a string with which it can be drawn up and down a big king is hung around it the ovens in the darkness under the stairs give forth a red glow the copper pans shine the spits are turning heaps of woods formed into pyramids hands suspended it is the busy hour of the morning bustle and hurry of scullions fat cooks and diminutive apprentices their caps profusely decorated with cock's feathers and wings of guinea fowl on metal and wicker plates they bring in piles of cakes and tarts tables laden with rolls and dishes of food other tables surrounded with chairs are ready for the consumers a small table in a corner covered with papers at which raganu is seated writing on the rising of the curtain scene one raganu pastry cooks then lise raganu is writing with an inspired air at a small table and counting on his fingers first pastry cook bringing an elaborate fancy dish fruits in nougat second pastry cook bringing another dish custard third pastry cook bringing a roast decorated with feathers peacock fourth pastry cook bringing a batch of cakes on a slab rissoles fifth pastry cook bringing a sort of pie dish beef jelly raganu ceasing to write and raising his head aurora silver rays begin to glint e'en now on the copper pans and thou o ragno must perforce stifle in thy breast the god of song anon shall come the hour of the lute now tis the hour of the oven he rises to a cook you make that sauce longer tis too short how much too short three feet he passes on farther what means he showing a dish to raganu the tart the pie before the fire my muse retire lest thy bright eyes be reddened by the faggot's blaze to a cook showing him some loaves you have put the cleft of the loaves in the wrong place know you not that the caesura should be between the hemistitches to another showing him an unfinished pastry to this palace of paste you must add the roof to a young apprentice who seated on the ground is spitting the fowls and you as you put on your lengthy spit the modest fowl and the superb turkey my son alternate them as the old malherbe loved well to alternate his long lines of verse with the short ones thus shall your roasts in strophes turn before the flame the apparentus also coming up with a tree covered by a napkin master i bethought me erewhile of your tastes and made this which will please you i hope he uncovers the tree and shows a large lyre made of pastry a lyre tis of brioche pastry with conserved fruits the strings see are of sugar giving him a coin go drink my health seeing lise enter hush my wife bustle pass on and hide that money to lise showing her the lyre with a conscious look is it not beautiful tis passing silly she puts a pile of papers on the counter bags good i thank you he looks at them heavens my cherished leaves the poems of my friends torn dismembered to make bags for holding biscuits and cakes ah tis the old tale again orpheus and the bacchantes 
and am i not free to turn at last to some use the sole thing that your wretched scribblers of halting lines leave behind them by way of payment grovelling aunt insult not the divine grasshoppers the sweet singers before you were the sworn comrade of all that crew my friend you did not call your wife aunt in bacchant to turn fair verse to such a use faith tis all it's good for pray then madam to what use would you degrade prose scene two the same two children who have just trotted into the shop what would you little ones three pies serving them see hot and well browned if it please you so will you rub them up for us aside alas one of my bags to the children what must i wrap them up he takes a bag and just as he is about to put in the pies he reads ulysses thus on leaving fair penelope not that one he puts it aside and takes another and as he is about to put in the pies he reads the gold-locked phoebus nay nor that one same play what are you dallying for here 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 he chooses a third the sonnet to phyllis but tis hard to part with it by good luck he has made up his mind at last shrugging her shoulders nicodemus she mounts on a chair and begins to range plates on a dresser taking advantage of the moment she turns her back calls back the children who are already at the door S children render me back the sonnet to phyllis and you shall have six pies instead of three the children give him back the bag seize the cakes quickly and go out smoothing out the paper begins to declaim phyllis on that sweet name a smear of butter phyllis cyrano enters hurriedly scene three raganu lees cyrano then the musketeer what's o'clock bowing low six o'clock with emotion in one hour's time he paces up and down the shop following him bravo i saw well what saw you then your combat which that in the burgundy hotel faith ah the duel ay the duel in verse he can talk of naught else well good let be making passes with the spit that he catches up at the envoy's end i touch at the envoy's end i touch tis fine fine at the envoy's end what hour is it now rag you know stopping short in the act of thrusting to look at the clock five minutes after six i touch he straightens himself oh to write a ballad to cyrano who as he passes by the counter has absently shaken hands with her what's wrong with your hand not a slight cut have you been in some danger none in the world shaking her finger at him methinks you speak not the truth in saying that did you see my nose quiver when i spoke faith it must have been a monstrous lie that should move it changing his tone i wait someone here leave us alone and disturb us for naught and it were not for the crack of doom but tis impossible my poets are coming oh ay for their first meal of the day prithee take them aside when i shall make you sign to do so what's o'clock ten minutes after six nervously seating himself at raganu's table and drawing some paper toward him a pen giving him the one from behind his ear here a swan's quill the musketeer with the fierce moustache enters and in a stentorian voice good day Liz goes up to him quickly turning round who's that tis a friend of my wife a terrible warrior at least so says he himself taking up the pen and motioning raganu away hush to himself i will write fold it give it her and fly throws down the pen coward but strike me dead if i dare to speak to her i even one single word to raganu what time is it a quarter after six striking his breast i a single word of all those here here but writing tis easier done he takes up the pen go to i will write it that love letter oh i have writ it and rewrit it in my own mind so oft that it lies there ready for pen and ink and if i lay but my soul by my letter sheet tis not to do but to copy from it he writes scene four raganu lees the musketeer cyrano at the little table writing 
the poets dressed in black their stockings ungartered and covered with mud here they come your mud bespattered friends first poet entering to ragunu brother in art second poet to ragunu shaking his hands dear brother hey soaring eagle among pastry cooks matter it smells good here in your airy tis at phoebus's own rays that thy roasts turn apollo among master cooks whom they surround and embrace ah oh, how quick a man feels at his ease with them we were stayed by the mob they are crowded all around the port in ale eight bleeding brigand carcasses strew the pavements there all slit open with sword gashes Cyrano, raising his head a minute eight hold me thought seven he goes on writing to Cyrano. know you who might be the hero of the fray carelessly not i to the musketeer and you know you whirling his moustache maybe writing a little way off is heard murmuring a word from time to time i loved thee twas one man say they all i swear to it one man who single-handed put the whole band to the rout twas a strange sight pikes and cudgels strewed thick upon the ground writing thine eyes and they were picking up hats all the way to key d'orfelva sabaristi but he must have been a ferocious same play thy lips twas a parlous fearsome giant that was the author of such exploits same play and when i see thee come i faint for fear felching a cake what has rhymed of late Aragonu? same play who worships thee he stops just as he is about to sign and gets up slipping the letter into his doublet no need i sign since i give it her myself to second poet i have put a recipe into verse seating himself by a plate of cream puffs go to let us hear these vassals looking at a cake which he has taken its cap is all on one side he makes one bite of the top see how this gingerbread woos the famous rhymer with its almond eyes and its eyebrows of angelica he takes it we listen squeezing a cream puff gently how it laughs till its very cream runs over biting a bit of the great lyre of pastry this is the first time in my life that ever i drew any means of nourishing me from the lyre who has put himself ready for reciting cleared his throat settled his cap struck an attitude <clears throat> a recipe in verse to first poet nudging him you are breakfasting to second and you dining methinks how almond tartlets are made beat your eggs up light and quick froth them thick mingle with them while you beat juice of lemon essence fine then combine the burst milk of almonds sweet circle with a custard paste the slim waist of your tartlet moulds the top with a skilful fingerprint nick and dint round their edge then drop by drop in its little dainty bed your cream shed in the oven place each mould reappearing softly brown the renowned almond tartlets you behold with mouths crammed full this this was was it. delicious choking <clears throat> they go up eating who has been watching goes toward ragunu lulled by your voice did you see how they were stuffing themselves in a low voice smiling oh ay, I, I see well enough but i never will seem to look fearing to distress them thus i gain a double pleasure when i recite to them my poems for i leave those poor fellows who have not breakfasted free to eat even while i gratify my own dearest foible see you clapping him on the shoulder friend i like you right well ragunu goes after his friends cyrano follows him with his eyes then rather sharply who there lise lise who is talking tenderly to the musketeer starts and comes down towards Cyrano. So this fine captain is laying siege to you? Offended. One haughty glance of my eye can conquer any man that should dare venture aught against my virtue. 
who conquering eyes methinks are oft conquered eyes choking with anger but insensibly i like raguno well and so mark me dame lise i permit not that he be rendered a laughing-stock by any but who has raised his voice so as to be heard by the gallant a word to the wise he bows to the musketeer and goes to the doorway to watch after looking at the clock to the musketeer who has merely bowed in answer to cyrano's bow how now is this your courage why turn you not a jest on his nose on his nose ay ay his nose he goes quickly farther away lise follows him from the doorway signing to ragunu to draw the poets away hist showing them the door on the right we shall be more private there impatiently hist hist drawing them further to read poetry tis better here despairingly with his mouth full what leave the cakes never let's take them with us they all follow ragunu in procession after sweeping all the cakes of the trays scene five cyrano roxa the duena ah if i see but the faint glimmer of hope then i draw out my letter roxa masked followed by the duena appears at the glass pane of the door he opens quickly enter walking up to the duena two words with you duena four sir an it like you are you fond of sweet things ay i could eat myself sick on them catching up some paper bags from the counter good see you these two sonnets of monsieur buzerade hey which i fill for you with cream cakes changing her expression ha what say you to the cake they call a little puff if made with cream sir i love them passing well here i plunge six for your eating into the bosom of a poem by saint amand and in these verses of chapelain i glide a lighter morsel stay love you hot cakes ay to the core of my heart filling her arms with the bags pleasure me then go eat them all in the street but pushing her out and come not back till the very last crumb be eaten he shuts the door comes down toward roxanne and uncovering stands at a respectful distance from her scene six cyrano roxanne blessed be the moment when you condescend remembering that humbly i exist to come to meet me and to say to tell roxanne who has unmasked to thank you first of all that dandy count whom you checkmated in brave sword-play last night he's the man whom a great lord desirous of my favour ah de guiche casting down her eyes sought to impose on me for husband ay husband dupe husband husband elamode bowing then i fought happy chance sweet lady not for my ill favour for your favours fair confession next but ere i make my shrift you must be once again that brother friend with whom i used to play by the lakeside ay you would come each spring to bergerac mind you the reeds you cut to make your swords well you wove cornstraw plates for your doll's hair those were the days of games and blackberries in those days you did everything i bid roxanne in her short frock was madeleine was i fair then you were not ill to see oft times with hands all bloody from a fall you'd run to me then aping mother ways i in a voice would be severe would chide she takes his hand what is this scratch again that i see here she starts surprised oh tis too much what's this cyrano tries to draw away his hand no let me see at your age fie where did you get that scratch i got it playing at the port de nail seating herself by the table and dipping her handkerchief in a glass of water give here sitting by her so soft so gay maternal sweet and tell me while i wipe away the blood how many against you oh 
a hundred near. Come, tell me. No, let be, but you, come tell the thing just now you dared not. Keeping his hand. Now I dare. The scent of those old days emboldens me. Yes, now I dare. Listen. I am in love. Ah. But with one who knows not. Ah. Not yet. Ah. But who, if he knows not, soon shall learn. Ah. A poor youth, who all this time has loved timidly from afar, and dares not speak. Ah. Leave your hand. Why, it is fever hot. But I have seen love trembling on his lips. Ah. Uh. Bandaging his hand with her handkerchief. And to think of it, that he by chance. Yes, cousin, he is of your regiment. Ah. Uh. Is cadet in your own company. Ah. Uh. On his brow he bears the genius stamp. He is proud, noble, young, intrepid, fair. Rising suddenly, very pale. Fair. Why, what ails you? Nothing. Tis... He shows his hand, smiling. This scratch. I love him. All is said. But you must know I have only seen him at the comedy. How? You have never spoken? Eyes can speak. How know you, then, that he... Oh. People talk neath the limes in the Place Royale. Gossip's chat has let me know. He is cadet? In the guards. His name? Baron Christian de Nevelet. How now? He is not of the guards. Today he is to join your ranks, under Captain Carbon de Castel Jaloux. Ah, how quick, how quick the heart has flown. But my poor child. The duena opening the door. The cakes are eaten, Monsieur Bergerac. Then read the verses printed on the bags. She goes out. My poor child, you who love but flowing words, bright wit, what if he be but a lout unskilled? No, his bright locks like Durfe's heroes. Ah, a well-curled pate and witless tongue, perchance. Ah, no, I guess, I feel, his words are fair. All words are fair that lurk neath fair moustache. Suppose he were a fool. Stamping her foot. Then bury me. After a pause. Was it to tell me this? You brought me here. I fail to see what use this serves, madame. Nay, but I felt a terror here in the heart. On learning yesterday, you were Gascons, all of your company. And we provoke all beardless sprigs that favor dares admit, midst as pure Gascons. Pure, heaven save the mark. They told you that as well? Ah, think how I trembled for him. Between his teeth. Not causelessly. But when last night I saw you brave, invincible, punish that dandy, fearless, hold your own against those brutes, I thought, I thought if he whom all fear, all, if he would only... Good. I will befriend your little baron. Ah, You'll promise me you will do this for me. I've always held you as a tender friend. Ay, ay. Then you will be his friend. I swear. And he shall fight no duels. Promise. None. You are kind, cousin. Now I must be gone. She puts on her mask, unveil, quickly, then absently. You have not told me of your last night's fray. Ah, but it must have been a hero fight. Bid him to write. She sends him a kiss with her fingers. How good you are. Aye, aye. A hundred men against you. Now farewell. We are great friends. Aye, aye. Oh, bid him write. You'll tell me all one day. A hundred men. Ah, brave. How brave. Bowing to her. I have fought better since. She goes out. Cyrano stands motionless, with eyes on the ground, a silence. The door right opens, Raganu looks in. Scene 7. Cyrano, Raganu, Poets, Carbon du Castel Jaloux, the Cadets, a crowd, then de Guiche. Can we come in? Without stirring. Yes. Raganu signs to his friends, and they come in. 
at the same time by door at back enters carbon the castel jaloux in captain's uniform he makes gestures of surprise on seeing serrano here he is raising his head captain our hero we heard all thirty or more of my cadets are there shrinking back but trying to draw him away come with me they will not rest until they see you no they're drinking opposite at the bear's head i going to the door and calling across the street in a voice of thunder he won't come the hero's in the sulks first cadet outside ah son dear tumult outside noise of boots and swords is heard approaching rubbing his hands they are running across the street entering mildieu capdidius pocadidius raganu drawing back startled gentlemen are you all from gascony all oh. second cadet to cyrano bravo baron first gascon shaking his hands vivat baron come i must embrace you we'll embrace him all in turn not knowing whom to reply to baron baron i beg are you all barons sirs ay every one is it true ay why you could build a tower with nothing but our coronets my friend lebre entering and running up to cyrano they're looking for you here's a crazy mob led by the men who followed you last night what have you told them where to find me rubbing his hands yes the burgher entering followed by a group of men sir all the marais is a coming here outside the street is filled with people chaises are porters and carriages have drawn up in a low voice smiling to cyrano and roxane quickly hush calling outside cyrano! a crowd rush into the shop pushing one another acclamations standing on a table lo my shop invaded they break all magnificent my, my, friend, friend, my, friend, my friend my friend my friend me seems that yesterday i had not all these friends delighted success first marquis hurrying up with his hands held out my friend didst thou but know thou mary thou pray when did we herd swine together you and i i would present you sir to some fair dames who in my carriage yonder coldly ah and who will first present you sir to me what's wrong hush gazetteer with writing board a few details no nudging his elbows tis theophrast renaudet of the court gazette who cares this paper but it is of great importance they say it will be an immense success advancing sir what another pray permit i make a pentacrostic on your name also advancing pray sir enough enough a moment in the crowd de guiche appears escorted by officers quiji brezaillet the officers who went with cyrano the night before quiji comes rapidly up to cyrano here is monsieur de guiche a murmur every one makes way he comes from the marche d'ogation bowing to cyrano who would express his admiration sir for your new exploit noised so loud abroad bravo, bravo! bowing the marshal is a judge of valour he could not have believed the thing unless these gentlemen had sworn they witnessed it with our own eyes aside to cyrano who has an absent air but you hush but you suffer starting before this rabble i he draws himself up twills his moustache and throws back his shoulders wait you shall see to whom Quijay has spoken in a low voice. In feats of arms already your career abounded. You serve with those crazy pates of Gascons? I with the cadets. With us. Looking at the cadets, ranged behind Cyrano. Ah, oh, all these gentlemen of haughty mien. Are they the famous? Cyrano? I, Captain. Since all my companies assembled here, pray favor me present them to my lord making two steps toward de guiche my lord de guiche permit that i present pointing to the cadets the bold cadets of gascony of carbon of castel jaloux 
brawling and swaggering boastfully the bold cadets of gascony spouting of armory heraldry their veins a brimming with blood so blue the bold cadets of gascony of carbon of castle jaloux eagle eye and spindle shanks fierce mustache and wolfish tooth slash the rabble and scatter their ranks eagle eye and spindle shanks with a flaming feather that gaily pranks hiding the holes in their hats for sooth eagle eye and spindle shanks fierce mustache and wolfish tooth pink your doublet and slit your trunk are their gentlest sobriquets with fame and glory their soul is drunk pink your doublet and slit your trunk in brawl and skirmish they show their spunk give rendezvous and broil and fray pink your doublet and slit your trunk are their gentlest sobriquets what ho cadets of gascony all jealous lovers are sport for you o woman dear divinity what ho cadets of gascony whom scowling husbands quake to see blow tartara and cry cuckoo what ho cadets of gascony husbands and lovers are game for you seated with a haughty carelessness in an armchair brought quickly by ragunum a poet tis the fashion of the hour will you be mine no sir no man's last night your fancy pleased my uncle richelieu i'll gladly say a word to him for you great heavens i imagine you have rhymed five acts or so in serrano's ear your play your agrippine you see it staged at last take them to him beginning to be tempted and attracted in sooth i would he is a critic skilled he may correct a line or two at most whose face stiffens at once impossible my blood congeals to think that other hand should change a comma's dot but when a verse approves itself to him he pays it dear good friend he pays less dear than i myself when a verse pleases me i pay myself and sing it to myself you are proud really you have noticed that second cadet entering with a string of old battered plumed beaver hats full of holes slung on a sword see cyrano this morning on the quay what strange bright feathered game we caught the hats of the fugitives spolia opima ah, <laughs> ah, ah. <laughs> he who laid that ambush faith must curse and swear who was it i myself the laughter stops i charge them work too dirty for my sword to punish and chastise a rhymester's sot constrained silence in a low voice to cyrano showing him the beavers what to do with them they're full of grease a stew taking the sword and with a salute dropping the hats at de guiche's feet sir pray be good enough to render them back to your friends rising sharply my chair there quick i go to cyrano passionately as to you sirrah brisaille in the street portus for my lord de guichet who has controlled himself smiling have you read don quixote i have and doff my hat at the mad knight errant's name i counsel you to study appearing at back my lord's chair the windmill chapter bowing chapter the thirteenth for when one tilts gainst windmills it may chance tilt i gainst those who change with every breeze that the windmill sails may sweep you with their arm down in the mire or upward to the stars de guiche goes out and mounts into his chair the other lords go away whispering together lebre goes to the door with them the crowd disperses scene eight cyrano lebre the cadets who are eating and drinking at tables left and right bowing mockingly to those who go out without daring to salute him gentlemen gentlemen coming back despairingly here's a fine coil 
Oh, scold away. At least you will agree that to annihilate each chance of fate exaggerates. Yes, I exaggerate. Triumphantly. Ah. But for principle, example too, I think tis well thus to exaggerate. Oh, lay aside that pride of musketeer, fortune and glory wait you. Ay, and then seek a protector, choose a patron out, and like the crawling ivy round a tree that licks the bark to gain the trunk's support, climb high by creeping ruse instead of force. No gramercy, what I, like all the rest, dedicate verse to bankers? Play buffoon, and cringing hope to see at last a smile not disapproving on a patron's lips? Gramercy, no. What? Learn to swallow toads? With frame a weary climbing stairs? A skin grown grimed and horny here about the knees? And acrobat-like teach my back to bend? No gramercy, or double-faced and sly, run with the hare while hunting with the hounds, and oily-tongued to win the oil of praise, flatter the great man to his very nose? No gramercy, steal soft from lap to lap, a little great man in a circle small, or navigate with madrigals for sails blown gently windward by the old lady's sighs? No, gramercy! Bribe kindly editors to spread abroad my verses? Gramercy! Or try to be elected as the Pope of tavern councils held by imbeciles? No, gramercy! Toil to gain reputation by one small sonnet instead of making many? No, gramercy! or flatter sorry bunglers, be terrorized by every prating paper, say ceaselessly, Oh, had I but the chance of a fair notice in the mercury, gramercy, no, grow pale, fear, calculate, prefer to make a visit to a rhyme, seek introductions, draw petitions up, no, gramercy, and no, and no again. But sing, dream, laugh, go lightly, solitary, free, with eyes that look straight forward, fearless voice, to cock your beaver just the way you choose, or yes, or no, show fight, or turn a rhyme, to work without one thought of gain or fame, to realize that journey to the moon, never to pen a line that has not sprung straight from the heart within embracing then modesty say to oneself good my friend be thou content with flowers fruit nay leaves but pluck them from no garden but thine own and then if glory come by chance your way to pay no tribute unto caesar none but keep the merit all your own, in short, disdaining tendrils of the parasite, to be content, if neither oak nor elm, not to mount high, perchance, but mount alone. Alone, and if you will, but not with hand against every man. How in the devil's name have you conceived this lunatic idea, to make foes for yourself at every turn? by dint of seeing you at every turn make friends and fawn upon your frequent friends with mouth wide smiling slit from ear to ear i pass still unsaluted joyfully and cry what ho oh, another enemy lunacy well what if it be my vice my pleasure to displease to love men hate me ah friend of mine believe me I march better neath the crossfire of glances inimical. How droll the stains one sees on fine laced doublets, from gall of envy where the poltroons drivel. The enervating friendship which enfolds you is like an open laced Italian collar floating around your neck in woman's fashion. One is at ease thus, but less proud the carriage. The forehead, free from mainstay, or coercion bends here there everywhere but i 
embracing hatred she lends forbidding stiffly fluted the rough's starched folds that hold the head so rigid each enemy another fold a gopher who adds a constraint and adds a ray of glory for hatred like the rough worn by the spanish grips like a vice but frames you like a halo after a silence taking his arm speak proud aloud and bitter in my ear whisper me simply this she loves thee not hush christian has just entered and mingled with the cadets who do not speak to him he has seated himself at a table where lise serves him scene nine cyrano libre the cadets christian the novelet third cadet seated at a table glass in hand cyrano cyrano turns round the story in its time he goes up on libre's arm they talk in low voices rising and coming down the story of the fray twill lessen well he stops before the table where christian is seated this timid young apprentice raising his head apprentice who this sickly northern greenhorn sickly hark monsieur de neville this in your ear there's somewhat here one no more dares to name than to say rope to one whose sire was hanged what may that be see here he puts his finger three times mysteriously on his nose do you understand oh tis the hush oh never breathe that word unless you'd reckon with him yonder he points to cyrano who is talking with libre second gascon who has meanwhile come up noiselessly to sit on the table whispering behind him hark he put two snuffling men to death in rage for the sole reason they spoke through their nose darting on all fours from under the table where he had crept and if you would not perish in the flower of youth oh mention not the fatal cartilage clapping him on the shoulder a word a gesture for the indiscreet his handkerchief may prove his winding sheet silence all with crossed arms look at christian he rises and goes over to carbon de casteljalou who is talking to an officer and feigns to see nothing captain turning and looking at him from head to foot sir pray what skills it best to do to southerners who swagger give them proof that one may be a northerner yet brave he turns his back on him i thank you to cyrano now the tale the, the tale. tale coming toward them the tale all bring their stools up and group round him listening eagerly christian is astride a chair well i went all alone to meet the band the moon was shining clock-like full of the sky when suddenly some careful clock right passed a cloud of cotton wool across the case that held the silver watch and presto hi the night was inky black and all the keys were hidden in the murky dark gadzooks one could see nothing further than one's nose silence all slowly rise looking in terror at cyrano who has stopped dumbfounded pass who on god's earth is that it is a man who joined to-day making a step toward christian to-day yes his name is the baron de neville checking himself good it is well he turns pale flushes makes as if to fall on christian i he controls himself what said i for the burst of rage mordius then continues calmly that it was dark astonishment the cadets reseat themselves staring at him on i went thinking for a knavish cause i may provoke some great man some great prince who certainly could break my nose everyone starts up christian balances on his chair in a choked voice my teeth who would break my teeth and i imprudent like was poking my nose my finger in the crack between the tree and bark he may prove strong and wrap me over the nose wiping his forehead or the knuckles i but i cried forward gascon duty calls on cyrano and thus i ventured on when from the shadow came a crack of the nose i parry it 
find myself nose to nose bounding onto him heaven and earth all the gascons leap up to see but when he is close to christian he controls himself and continues <laughs> with a hundred brawling sots who stink a noseful white but smiling onions brandy cups i leapt out head well down nosing the winds i charge gore two impale one run him through one aims at me puff and i parry puff bursting out great god out all of you the cadets rush to the doors the tiger awakes every man out leave me alone with him we shall find him minced fine minced into hash and a big pasty i am turning pale and curl up like a napkin limp and white let us be gone he will not leave a crumb i die of fright to think what will pass here shutting door right something too horrible all have gone out by different doors some by the staircase cyrano and christian are face to face looking at each other for a moment scene ten embrace me now sir you are brave no oh, but nay i insist pray tell me come embrace i am her brother whose brother hers in faith roxanne's rushing up to him oh heavens her brother cousin brother the same thing and she has told you all she loves me say maybe taking his hands how glad i am to meet you sir that may be called a sudden sentiment i ask your pardon looking at him with his hand on his shoulder true he's fair the villain ah sir if you but knew my admiration but all those noses oh i take them back roxanne expects a letter woe's a day how oh. i am lost if i but ope my lips why so i am a fool could die for shame none is a fool who knows himself a fool and you did not attack me like a fool bah one finds battle cry to lead the assault i have a certain military wit but before women i can but hold my tongue their eyes true when i pass their eyes are kind and when you stay their hearts methinks are kinder no for i am one of those men tongue tied i know uh, who can never tell their love and i me seems had nature been more kind more careful when she fashioned me had been one of those men who well could speak their love oh to express one's thoughts with facile grace to be a musketeer with handsome face roxanne is precious i'm sure to prove a disappointment to her looking at him had i but such an interpreter to speak my soul eloquence where to find it that i lend if you lend me your handsome victor charms lended we make a hero of romance how so think you you can repeat what things i daily teach your tongue what do you mean roxanne shall never have a disillusion say wilt thou that we woo her double-handed wilt thou that we two woo her both together feelst thou passing from my leather doublet through thy laced doublet all my soul inspiring but serrano will you i say i fear since by yourself you fear to chill her heart will you to kindle all her heart to flame wed into one my phrases and your lips your eyes flash will you will it please you so give you such pleasure madly it then calmly business like it would amuse me it is an enterprise to tempt a poet will you complete me and let me complete you you march victorious i go in your shadow let me be wit for you be you my beauty the letter that she waits for even now i never can taking out the letter he had written see here it is your letter what take it look it wants but the address but i fear nothing send it it will suit but have you oh we have our pockets full we poets of love letters writ to chloe's daphne's creations of our noddle heads our lady loves phantasms of our brains dream fancies blown into soap bubbles come take it and change feigned love words into true 
I breathe my sighs and moans haphazard wise. Call all these wandering lovebirds home to nest. You'll see that I was in these lettered lines eloquent all the more the less sincere. Take it and make an end. Were it not well to change some words, written haphazard wise, will it fit Roxanne? Twill fit like a glove. But O oh, credulity of love, Roxanne will think each word inspired by herself. My friends He throws himself into Serrano's arms. They remind thus Scene eleven Serrano Christian the Gascons the Musketeer Lise First Gascon half opening the door not here the silence of the grave i dare not look he puts his head in why entering and seeing cyrano and christian embracing oh, oh this passes all consternation the musketeer mockingly ho ho our demon has become a saint struck on one nostril lo he turns the other then we may speak about his nose henceforth calling to lise boastfully ah uh, lise see here sniffing ostentatiously oh heavens what a stink going up to serrano you sir without a doubt have sniffed it up what is the smell i notice here coughing his head clove heads general delight the cadets have found the old serrano again they turn somersaults curtain end of act two